Hi, this is Isaac Harper and I want to welcome you to our series of time-saving tips. Have you ever wanted to use dynamic blocks that ship inside of AutoCAD or ones that you might have gathered over the years but couldn't because they didn't have the flexibility you wanted? In this tip, I want to show you how you can edit an existing dynamic block content to accommodate the sizes and some other settings that you desire. To begin, let's start by inserting a couple dynamic blocks that get shipped within AutoCAD from the Design Center. You can launch the Design Center in several ways, but the most common are to use the Insert tab on the ribbon and then use the button on the Content tab. You could also use the Control 2 shortcut key on the keyboard. Once the Design Center pops up, you can go ahead and navigate through your folders to look for the content, but to find the stuff that ships with AutoCAD fast, simply hit the Home button and it will be categorized right below the Design Center in Dynamic Blocks. This is a great way to find that folder really fast. From here, I'm going to go ahead and go into the Architectural Imperial and we'll do to take a look at the blocks that they have inside of here. And insert two different blocks. We're going to go ahead and drag in a window and I also want to go ahead and drag in the toilet block. Now from here I'm going to close the Design Center because we don't need it anymore. And I'm going to zoom out. Let's move these things apart from each other. And I want you to take a look at some of the items. First of all, when I highlight the exterior window, you will notice there are some sizing grips that were applied to this dynamic block. If I were to select one of those sizing grips, notice that I'm able to drag the window out to any preset size that has been determined by the creator. You will also notice that I cannot choose in between the sizes, so this is a great way to make sure everybody is using the correct format or size and nobody's just creating their own size that fits. So let's go ahead and take a look on how they did this. In order to edit a dynamic block, what you want to do is go ahead and double click on it. This will open up the block definition. Just hit OK. And you will notice over here that you're going to see an authorizing palette that's going to have parameters, actions, parameter sets, and constraints. Well, the things that we want to look at, first of all, is these are already created. We're just showing you how to edit them. So from here, what we're going to do is if I were to highlight the parameter that displays the width, you will notice that down here inside my properties palette, that there are under value set, there are several different ways that I can define how this property gets applied to the actual block. If I were to go to None, what this will allow me to do is make it any size that I want, but I can also set a minimum and a maximum distance. If I were to go to Incremental, I can set a set increment like every two inches, and once again, I can set a minimum and a maximum. But the ones that they have chosen here is actually List. If I were to go into List, notice the distance value for List. If I go ahead and select the ellipsis button, that's the three dots on the side, you will see that all the predetermined widths that are allowed by that constraint. From here, if I were to go ahead and add another one, for example, let's say that I want 72, and let's say I want 80 also. A real fast way to put these in is you can just put a comma in between and simply hit Add. Notice they immediately went ahead and popped inside the list. I can hit OK. A great thing that they have now added inside the block editor is a test block function. When you go into test block, it's just like if you were in the regular drawing, and notice that now I have those extra two sizes that I put way out there. This is a great way to test your functionality without having to save the block and go into AutoCAD, test it, and then come back to make any corrections. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. If I wanted to add the same parameters to the height, then I would simply just select this linear parameter here, and once again, go into my list, and I can add my different sizes. This is a great way to add the sizes that you need. The next thing I want to go ahead and do is take a look at this toilet block. Now first of all, let's take a look and see what it can do inside our AutoCAD drawing. If I were to go ahead and select it, you'll notice that I don't have any sizing grips because toilets remain the same size, but notice that I do have a mirroring grip or a flip grip that allows me to be able to flip the handle from one side or the other. That may not mean a whole lot for a toilet, but let's say if it was a block of a door, I could have a right or a left hand door really quick by using the flip grip. Another thing that I can do is I can use a lookup grip, which will allow me to be able to display nine different blocks that are inside this particular one. Realize you can add as many as you want. 
so that I can display the block as I want. Please realize this is not three-dimensional. These are separate blocks and it's just telling which one to display when I select it. When I go into the plan view, I want to show you there's a different one here. There's an alignment grip. Now that alignment grip is actually really great. What it allows me to do is if I'm designing, for example, let's go ahead and create a odd shaped bathroom here. And I'm going to do this for a particular reason. Watch what happens when I go to place this toilet along this wall. Notice that when I come in from the inside and I get close to the wall, it automatically rotates the block to match the angle of the wall. If I were coming from the other side, notice that it automatically rotates from that side and direction as well. So it is fairly intelligent on how you're placing this block in there. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what that parameter is. It's very easy to apply that alignment parameter. I'm going to draw a rectangle for my block just to keep it simple. So once I have my rectangle drawn, let's go ahead and block it. So I'm going to go ahead and type in B for block. Let's just call it box. I'm going to do a pick point. Let's just pick the top, midpoint. And we're going to go into select objects and we're going to select that. Tell it to convert it into a block on the screen. Once this has become a block, I can go ahead and double click on it and go into the block editor. And you will notice that it'll pop right up in here and I can come over here to alignment, simply pick where I want the alignment tool to be, specify the angle of my alignment, and from here I can go into test block. Now once I am in test block, I can draw a line, grip the block, and you will notice that as I come through here, I'm able to align that block. Works perfectly. So that's a real fast way you can have blocks aligned with objects. So I've showed you some of the more basic, powerful tools, but please realize there are a lot more that you can use. These are things that I can chain together as reactions and realize that I can make them very complex if I want to, to get the power that I need out of my blocks. But today we were just keeping it simple. I certainly hope you enjoyed this little portion, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.